Hey, welcome back to the Event Answer Studio. Today I want to show you how to make this no mess gender reveal balloon arrangement. It's a double stuffed balloon that you end up popping the inner balloon to reveal the gender. Let me show you step by step how to make this magic happen. The main balloon in this arrangement is a 24 inch bobo bubble balloon. But before we can use it, we have to pre-stretch the plastic. So I'm gonna stretch across the center point, rotate it, stretch again until I get all the way around the balloon before stretching the edges as well. Then I'm gonna grab my electric balloon inflator and inflate the bubble until it's almost its full size before letting the air out. And then I'll turn my attention to the nozzle. I'm gonna shorten the nozzle to about two inches in length, but if I rotate the nozzle around so that the seams are right in the middle first before I cut it, it'll make it much easier to open this valve and stuff things inside. To conceal the gender surprise, I'm using an 18 inch black balloon and I'm gonna pre-inflate this balloon as well, which will make it much easier to stuff later on. So once I fully inflated it, I'm just gonna let all the air out and then I can finally bring my black balloon and bubble together as one. Now to help stuff these inside of each other, I'm gonna use this chopstick, but you could also use a balloon stick or the blunt end of a bamboo skewer. I'm gonna put that inside the black balloon and then use that stick to guide it inside of my bubble balloon. Keep stuffing it in until both nozzles are right next to each other and then remove the chopstick. I then took the nozzle of the black balloon and folded it back over the nozzle of the clear bubble. This will help keep us from accidentally getting some of the powder between the clear bubble and the black balloon. To reveal the gender, I'll be stuffing inside this one inch tissue paper confetti in aqua, as well as this colored powder. Now this is something you'd usually see at a color run or at a gender reveal, but it's specifically formulated to be non-toxic and easy to clean up. It's best to stuff the confetti in first, so I'm going to open up the nozzle of the black balloon nice and wide, and because we folded that back, it's really easy to get it wide enough to stuff the confetti through without needing extra tools or funnels. So I'm just going to take little batches of confetti and stuff it through until I've got a nice fluffy mixture down in the body of the balloon. Once I've got all the confetti in, I'm then going to take a funnel and stick it inside the black balloon, making sure the end of that funnel is down into the body of the balloon and not up in the neck. Then I'm going to take my powder with a small hole cut into the bag that it came in and very slowly start pouring it into my funnel. If it needs a little assistance to get down into the balloon, you can gently tap it on the side of the funnel. Just don't tap it down against the table because if we press against the balloon, it'll push the air up and send a cloud of blue dust up into your face. So be nice and gentle with it and don't use very much. This was a two and a half ounce bag and I used maybe a quarter of it and that was more than enough to create the effect we were looking for. Next, I'm gonna insert my hand pump into the black balloon and making sure I've got a nice tight hold on the nozzles, I'm gonna inflate that balloon until it's almost 18 inches in size. We want the black balloon to be near its full capacity so it'll pop when we need it to. Now be careful when you're taking it off the hand pump as you can release some of that blue dust, but once you've got it off the pump, tie a knot in the nozzle of the black balloon and then stuff that nozzle down inside the clear bubble balloon. Then tightly hold on to the bubble balloon's nozzle and twist it around a couple times. We need to secure the bubble itself so that when the inner balloon pops, we still have the outer balloon holding air. To do that, I'm gonna use a deflated 260 I've tied a knot in, and I'm gonna put the center of that 260 right against the twist that I'm holding between my fingers. I'm also gonna hold that 260, pull one tail of that 260 nice and tight, and wrap it around the balloon a couple times. Then switch and do the same thing with the other tail pulling it tight and wrapping it in the opposite direction. Bring those two tails together and tie them in a knot and that'll not only secure the bubble but the tails of this 260 will give us a way to tie the bubble into the base. To make the base, I'm using four blue and four pink 11 inch balloons and I'll be using my electric balloon inflator and the sizer box to inflate those balloons to six inches and seven inches. First of all, you're gonna inflate two blue and two pink balloons to seven inches in size, and you'll fully inflate those balloons and then slowly let air out of them until they just fit through the seven inch hole in the sizer box before tying them off in a knot. Then repeat those steps with two more pink and blue balloons and inflate those to six inches in diameter. Taking two seven inch balloons, we're gonna tie them together in a pair by wrapping the nozzle around twice and tying them together into a simple knot. Do this with both the pink balloons and the blue balloons. Once you've got both of those pairs made, we're gonna bring them together into a quad. So overlap them so that the nozzles touch in the center and then wrap one balloon from each pair around each other and that will lock it into a quad. Do this with your six inch balloons as well and set that one aside. 
The 7 inch quad is the base of our design and to make it more stable I'm adding a water balloon that I filled to about the size of a tennis ball and I'm going to attach that to our 7 inch quad. So just take the nozzle of the water balloon and tie it to one of the nozzles in that quad. Then set this down on the table with the water balloon underneath. And to the top of this, we're going to add the 6 inch quad, making sure those balloons are snugged right between two of the lower balloons. To secure these together, I'm going to tie one nozzle from the 6 inch and one nozzle from the 7 inch quad together, and that will secure them as one piece. Next we can join our bubble balloon to the base, so I'm going to nestle it right down in the center of my base and then stretch out one of those 260 tails and wrap it around a couple of the balloons in the base and then you can just tuck any remaining 260 tail down into the center of that arrangement and it'll disappear. Do the same thing with the other 260, wrapping it around a couple other balloons, making sure you keep even tension between the two tails because if one is tighter than the other, it can tip that top balloon. The next step is to reinforce the outer bubble balloon and this is what makes the magic happen. By adding a small piece of clear packaging tape to the outer bubble, this will reinforce the bubble so that we can puncture through it and pop the inner balloon. So you want to take a small square of clear packaging tape, making sure you don't touch the adhesive as you'll leave fingerprints on it. Place the piece of tape one to two inches from the seam of the bubble balloon. We don't want to puncture right on the seam as we could accidentally pop the entire bubble. Once you've placed that piece of tape, I'm going to take a paint pen and draw a heart right on top of that tape so that whoever is popping this balloon can easily see right where they need to puncture the balloon. A simple pin will work great for this, but you can always jazz it up by taping your pin to a bamboo skewer or a chopstick and decorating it however you'd like. For today's balloon, I'm using a corsage pin, which is easy to see and handle, and it'll get the job done. Finally, I'm going to add some custom lettering to the front of my bubble balloon using that same white paint pen. Now the best advice I have if you'd like to do this as well is to be confident in your strokes and know that the bubble balloon is very forgiving. You can take a damp paper towel or a wet q-tip and easily erase any mistakes you might have. If you're not comfortable riding directly on the balloon, you could always get some vinyl lettering or decals and stick those to the front of the balloon as well. Before the pop, this is what our balloon arrangement looks like, and I love this design so much because we don't have to worry about this balloon flying away or when this balloon gets popped, making a gigantic mess at our party. When it's time to pop the balloon, pop with confidence. You don't want to just gently pin prick it through and have that inner balloon slowly deflate. So do it just like this. With the pop, the confetti explodes and the dust adheres to the inside of the bubble, so you get this fun, colored marble effect on the inside of the balloon. Now this does leave us with a small pinhole in our bubble balloon and you can either slowly let it deflate or just cover it with another piece of tape and that'll keep it inflated for the rest of the party. If you enjoyed this gender reveal, you should check out this baby shower project next. It just might come in handy. So until the next project, stay creative everybody. Bye!